So what kind of crops do you use in the pasture system? Like what do you start off with? Mom, they can eat that. Yeah. Well, I guess I should say they can eat that and gain weight from Wow. Yeah, you can go to the Cito website, pasture grasses. Yeah. Just go to forages. There will be a bunch of uh, fact sheets. A lot of Dr. Carpenter's work is on there. Where you get all the analysis and the growth and all that out there. You know, you gotta just think about it. What is the feed animals? 
just a, I guess we got to figure out the right uh, proportion of each of them. That's where, if that's where you are. The next part, right? used to make total mix rations. Well, that's good. Great. There are low cyanide varieties. That's going up. That's a little bit. yellow one that John Carey's got. Mac nuts and avocados make a good fat, right? Yeah. If I could just make a comment there. Hmm? Some animals can't eat avocados. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the green ones you can eat. If I could make a quick comment here, cattle here is a high quality, and that's good, because everybody's interested in low cost. One of the things in the conversation today about a lot of really good ideas, and it applies very much to feed, I like to let the animal go out there and harvest as much as they can. The intensity of highly mechanized thing where you've got to do everything for the animal. It's the cost here just the more animal, the animal can go do the harvesting, the better it's like that. So that's who I should just go to Basically, I'm just going to tell them the story is that... So is anybody here raising goats? Anybody have goats and yes. so many feed? Neighbors do. <laughs> yes. My neighbors milk, milk several goats. But do they feed them any commercial feed or do you know? No, they, they don't. Not much. They have a couple minerals. There's some minerals in there. But one thing I just remembered they do feed, that we feed our milk cow a little bit. Well, if you've ever done nutrient analysis, yes, yeah, well, he's his wife did a thesis project. It is ruminants. I love it. You better not let them get near it. They won't grow in your yard. They'll eat them the ground. <laughs> and I've heard that rabbits like it. Yeah. Yeah. So is it, is it pretty high in carb, like the roots of it is? Or what? Well, we were only feeding the leaves. Though. That's what I say, but the leaves, is this high carbohydrate or what? Kind of nutrient um, analysis are you looking at? Equal, we were looking at total proximate analysis. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and comparing it with what Mike's wife for her thesis project did a total survey of the islands as to what types of feeds were used for goats. Mm -hmm. And then we went out and we harvested the different types of feeds based on their feedback mm -hmm. and did a nutrient profile. So her thesis uh -huh. has a complete profile, mineral profile. But they were actually feeding. Uh, what, yes. what, what they were feeding. Is, is there a way to get that information? Yeah, her thesis and there's a couple of manuscripts. Yeah. Ruth uh, Nino DuPont, uh, probably if you'll go on the university website. And then what's her name? I'm sorry. Ruth Nino DuPont. Tea roots have some sugars in them, right? Yeah. Yeah. The roots, oh, we were just, they were. You know, yeah. Yeah. And cutting the leaves rather than pulling the roots yeah, 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 yeah. to allow it to reestablish itself. Yeah, yeah, it regenerates. Yeah. Good, yeah. yeah, but the roots are high, high carbs too. They right. Right. I mean, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So a lot of people are growing chickens, you know, and if they want to raise eggs, um, they have to give them a high quality feed. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of options are there? If you want to oh, grow chicken. your own feed for chickens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did some preliminary studies with kind of mobile crates and... Yeah, basically right now we've got a try to go on with John Kennedy, not John Kennedy, but Michael Hubble. Oh, yeah. And basically he's developed like a fodder field. And basically, he's got sugar cane, mulberry leaves, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, He's plant planted that in lines, and he just harvests a line a day, mm -hmm. and then he throws that into the pan. Yeah, well, it's not so, much so by the time he reaches the end of the, 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 the orchard or wherever he's going at the field, 
we'll come back here and this one has sprouted up again. Yeah. So it's almost like a rotational grazing thing. Oh, well. and, and that's, that's uh, enough for them to be yeah. used. He also feeds Any, the uh, scratch, though. Scratch. Because I, I yeah. got scratch from him. Yeah. Yeah. He splits a coconut every once in a while. Yeah. But he is feeding scratch. Yeah, yeah it's this non-GMO scratching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's you know, some, yeah, some people have used the soldier fly, too, also. Well, that's another one that we're working on, too. Yeah, but the, the challenge with the soldier fly, if you ever go to a commercial thing, that will never pass. Because the federal government has a lot of any feed that is produced for animal use can mm -hmm. have more than 15% of the animal products. Uh, so if you're going into something with 100% <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't sell it. You can't sell it. You can sell it, you can sell it, you can sell it yeah, but, but, but for your personal, personal use. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So can I ask, um, I would love to have uh, black soldier flies, but I don't know how do you attract them. They just come up here. I don't understand. I have found that I put compost on top of the rest of the waste. Yeah, if you lift your compost, you can see like a flat area of white. Uh, uh, coffee grounds. Oh, that's what you're using. Those are not maggots. Yeah. They are maggots. Oh, those are soldier flies? Yeah. So they're the bigger ones. They're the big ones, yeah. Oh, they're all over. All you have to do is get a fly catcher. When we had that session up at Komahana, there was kind of raising soldier flies and looking at that. That, that was Robert Olivier. And he has a, his own company. Is it tea or tea leaves? Tea leaves. Tea. 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 Maybe you could gather after Mary Lambert gives us tons of TV, plenty of food. You'll have to get your truck. Robert will have to get his name. He comes from. You know, so I was not. You know, I don't think we're going to get a cat strong. Look at the dark end. You just type in black soldier for his name. Oh, okay. And you just look at. Is he local? Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that. 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 It was a long story, but anyway, when he came and I met him, I met him. Yeah, oh, okay. Before, and he decided to come to work. Yes, he was trying to do a trial or a trial. He said, the soldier flies could break them off. And the soldier flies did break them down, but he found out it was a lot easier to use the garbage. But over here, I decided to make enough garbage for him to use trials. But the thing, what, what was spooky about him is, he came over and he was married yeah, yeah. from Texas. Um, My wife came with him, she didn't like Hawaii. When he went back, he, he told me, I'm coming back. And when he came back, he came back by himself. And I looked at him and I said, how long are you going to stay? He said, I'm here forever. I said, oh, well, where's your wife? Oh, you got me for he just wants to go for a few more hours. He does that. So I think when you let him, then we just put these little boxes in and then the soldier flies just come. I was asking you earlier about these junk trees. What we call junk trees. Yeah, I don't eat the flies. I just. So I have a question. It's not. It's not volunteering any good information. What is, what is the process for silage? Oh, great question. What's that process for silage? What is silage? What's in silage? Okay. Silage, by definition, is a fermented feedstuff. So what you do is you, you chop the material up in the small part. Because the key is you're going to pack it in some type of anaerobic environment. So you've probably seen pictures of upright silos. Big round silos are in the air. You may have seen square silos where concrete's built. You could actually dig holes in the earth and have what we call trench silos. Uh, they also have, now on the mainland, they use ag bags, where you actually, it's like a sausage bag. Um, but what you're doing is you're chopping up the feet, you're putting it under pressure, and you're putting it in an anaerobic environment without oxygen. And the natural bacteria in that plant is going to start a fermentation process to where Early on, you get an acetic acid production. The heat comes up, the bacteria produce, and then it converts to a lactic acid fermentation. And then the lactic acid, in about a 21 to 28 day period, depending on the substrate, the lactic acid will actually pickle it. And so it preserves it. So it keeps it in a moist, 
preserved state. Now the benefit is that you're able to store wet feet. Mm. And here in Hawaii, a lot of our feet are wet. And if you were to try to dry it, it's taking out a lot of moisture. At the same time, if you try to uh, ensile too wet a product, then the pressure of putting it together, then you get seepage and you get mm -hmm. runoff from where, as the fermentation begins, and you got liquid coming out of the fermentation. Then you got a stinking mess, uh, to, and you're also losing nutrients because your soluble carbohydrates, your soluble proteins that are in the, the feed stuff will seep out. So what they will quite often do is they'll wilt it a little bit before they chop it. So you actually cut the product, let it wilt a little bit, then you do the chopping. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you know, since I'm still in the South Pacific, there are kind of places that actually okay, so ensile breadfruit for human consumption. Yeah. Okay, so the next question uh, about silage is, uh, you know Big Island Dairy uses their GMO corn yeah. to make silage yeah. for cows? Does that break down the GMO DNA? Well, I would first call the United to just ask them what they need. Now, the, the bugs in the stomach will break it down. Because again, okay. yeah. a protein is made up of amino <laughs> acids. Okay. And in the ruminant animal, as you feed it any type of protein, the bacteria in the, the stomach of a cow is more than a fermentation bag. So the cow does not live off of the protein in the feed. The cow lives off from primarily the protein produced by the bugs that are in this fermentation. So you feed that. And those microorganisms then break all of the proteins down to amino acids. Those amino acids are then resynthesized into bacterial protein that then flush down the GI tract mm -hmm. and then get digested and absorbed. So it's bacterial protein. Uh, it's the same as starch, very little starch. Does the cow use? The bacteria use the starch. They use the sugars. What the cow uses is the volatile fatty acids produced by the fermentation. Mm -hmm. If the cow passes grain, which they yes. will do, yes, if she spread pieces high, high of grain high. pass through, it, it, the yeah. DNA does go on though. Yeah. Passes on through. Yeah. Well, DNA, protein, two different things, of course. Yeah. 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 But so DNA is broken like down the GI tract too. Is that what it is, right? Because it has the lactic acid, so. Is it like sauerkraut? It's very, it's salt. the same, it's like pickles. It's then it's good There's for no salt your, put in it. So. Yeah, then it's good for your immune system. So it's probably good for the creature that's eating it. Well, it's, pal it's, pal Oops, it's palatable. The animals find salad very palatable. Very yeah. And then depending on the quality of the fermentation, you can have a very distinct sweet smell, or if it's a bad fermentation, you can have kind of a too treat smell, which makes it. Yeah, I had asked him earlier about these junk trees, you know, Albizia, Cecropia, Malochia, and gunpowder, especially those four. Mm -hmm. And if anybody was you know, feeding them in a real systematic way, you know, I, I, I feed them, but not very systematically. <laughs> so you had Albizia, what was the other one? Cecropia, C E C R O P I A. What's the common name of the No, that's, 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 that's uh, a Latin name. That's, that's a Latin name. You can find it by that. And Malochia, M E L O C H I A, also in the toilet paper tree. And gunpowder tree. I don't know the scientific, I've seen it, but I can't think of it. The taxonomic name is written down. Okay, I love them all. And I think goats do too. And, uh, and I was able to find online the Malochia something over 20% protein. So the cat, do the cattle actually eat the small branches or primarily the leaves? Pretty much the leaves. They'll eat the, you know, the little petioles and that sort of stuff. But they, they, you know, they don't really chew into the others unless they're really young and tender. Can you use banana stalks to make silage? Yep. We go home and do that. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I, did a, I did a trial with a fellow in, in um, Manoa where we actually grazed corn, where we raised it and we had a mobile, like a mobile unit for chickens, where we, every day we moved it and they were given new corn and it's amazing to see mature corn and the cows, when you limit the, the amount that they'll eat the 
year first. Oh, yep. Oh, they, they, go, oh, they eat the whole year. And then they'll eat the tops, and then when there's nothing left, they'll eat the stems down. So. <laughs> pigs yeah. do that too. The pigs will do yeah. the same thing. No, I've seen because um, the wild pigs came into my yard and dug up my corn husks and they caught them. It was yeah. all gone. <laughs> yeah, they ate everything. <laughs> yeah, I've been wondering about that, about them. Corn silage, do they? They let it set years before. It yeah. Starts. Oh, yeah. You want it to set years okay. because the energy is in the years. Yeah. It just just so, hits, barely hits the dent stage. Yeah. Okay. Early, early. What we call early dent. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And and also you don't want it to be too wet because when you do make the silage, you don't want it to lose the nutrients and the soluble flushing. People feed them. Uh, of course, you got banana plants, but you know, banana, particularly where you got lots of them, the fruit itself, mm. pretty high carb, and lots of vitamins there. No, I'm not sure. Is there, do you know anybody that's using any bananas? I know uh, foreign. You'll, you'll see foreign reports where they'll use the banana, the cold banana fruits for for pigs. But I yeah, I, I ran into the Philippines uh, in 1978. Remember how long ago that was? Uh, Chiquita producing bananas. And they tried feeding some of their cold bananas to cattle and did fine except they didn't wash the fungicide off first. So they developed some health problems with the cattle. But, uh, now I know, I know uh, again coming back to Ruth's thesis over here, I know that banana was another one that she did where uh -huh. she did the nutrient analysis. And I, if I remember correctly that was also one of the ones that we did both goat and rabbit digestibility studies, mm -hmm. and I think banana was one of the substrates that we used. Pigs also like mac nut. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 They run through the mac fields at night, and then oh, yeah. the people in Kau, they go hunting and they kill the pigs. Yeah, we have a 40 acre mac nut behind our farm. Uh -huh. right. When the guy finally put a fence around it, mm -hmm. his mac nut pickup <laughs> increased by 50%. They were getting a third of the wow. nuts. And they said the meat tastes really good. The best you'll ever Yeah, you don't get that stinky, gamey stuff like the forest one. Mm -hmm. The mac nut pigs are supposed to be It's the best pork you'll eat. Well, on Oahu, you know, they're using a lot of the mac nuts. They're harvesting mac nuts and using to extract the oil from the mac nuts to mm -hmm. use in cosmetics over there. And so you get a, a cake that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. and Dr. Zaleski's sure done some feeding of the, of the cake. Mm -hmm. Okay, it might act like a, yeah, you know, you know the content of mac nuts, right? You understand they're about forty-six percent oil. Yeah, and, and yeah, they're very high quality. Good energy source. Yeah. Good protein source too. Somebody was asking about chicken feed before. It, on a large scale, it, it won't work, but something will grow here, and the chickens do quite well on it. Sunflowers. Mm. Yeah. And they will grow in cool weather or hot. You know something else you can do with your chicken is, you know that Zola? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. I have, I have yeah. just yeah. like buckets yeah. out with the Zola and then my chickens just help themselves. Oh, yeah. 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 Somebody was talking earlier about feeding oh, pigs, yeah. feeding yeah. algae to yeah. pigs. Yeah. Top dressing to feed with them. Is that A-Z-A-L-O? Azola? Azola. A-Z-O-L-L-A. A-Z-O-L-L-A. Chickens eat snails, like the big yeah, ones. They, do. yeah. they don't eat the big African snails. They eat oh, okay. African snails. Do they? Yeah, they, they will eat. They eat, they eat, they eat slugs. Yeah, they eat cookies. But they won't eat the big, they big eat fat ones. Huh. Yeah, Ducks yeah, yeah. will. Huh. Huh. They'll they'll grab them. I knew somebody whose mother-in-law, you know, worked with, you know, like the frogs, and what they did is they Fish. boiled it first, and then they roasted and put teriyaki sauce. Oh wow! It. They fried it. Hey, Terry, I'm sorry. I'm sure the pigs would like it. Michael, how much using the local fish waste do we even feed here? Well, you cannot feed more than 30% of the diet. Oh, but 30% is a whole lot. Is that bad for them? Fish meal generally about a ration of 5 or 10% is a lot. Oh, really? Why is that? Oh, you're right. Yeah. No, no, it's but you more can of give the, it to the, the taste when you transfer it to the meat. Ah, uh, you can taste fish again. But yeah, it's, I don't know, fish, but other places it's uh, high protein. Mm. It's very big. Energy. Actually, in Oregon, where they do a lot of the harvest of fish, they ensile the fish mm. waste out of the processing things. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know of any, is there any place here in Hawaii, I don't know of any place here in Hawaii where that they actually 
are collecting and feeding it. it goes into garbage, I think, but I don't know well, of any natural place. Natural farmers yeah, natural farmers, yeah. you take your barrel down to the city sun and they fill it up when they chop up all the fish. Okay. Mm. The other one is all the blood meal in the fall from mm -hmm. animals. Yeah. Oh, we love they actually got in trouble for that. Um, <laughs> at our um, school, we collect all the garbage uh, lunch into the plastic garbage cans and it goes to the pig mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm feeding one pig and mm -hmm. I get scraps from the bakery. Mm -hmm. I dump it in there, the pig every time will go eat the bagel first. Oh. <laughs> Red bagel, cinnamon rolls, all of that. He goes for, she goes for the bagel first every time. <laughs> I think in, in all of these cases, you know, we're talking on one and one, a few animals, mm -hmm. a person, but when when, that, when you start talking about how do you yeah. take it to a um, commercial scale or mm -hmm. something to where that's more than a subsistence family mm -hmm. yeah. animal, it becomes very difficult just because of the quantity of material mm -hmm. right. and the consistency of right. delivering that material and having it available mm -hmm. where you can mix yeah. it together. Unless you preserve it, right? Well, there, there are ways other places. Are. Well, I, but I don't think it's really, for most of them, it's not, if you have a few animals, most of it, you're not going to have so much material that they're not going to clean it up pretty quickly. Unless you have, um, you know like how our kitchen water goes into the sewage? So if you had like kitchen food waste going into a bin and then going into some place, you know, where they collect all the food waste, then you could have farmers get it. Does that make sense? Like the recycling bin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're doing that in San Francisco. They do? Yeah, they collect wow. it. They actually collect it at the individual homes. Mm -hmm. And then they have people who do the compost. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's actually part of their law. You actually have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's so composting. That's not animal feed. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but, but they are, they have a collection, they have a collection program. Mm -hmm. Get one of those bins that prevent, like, like a diaper How about uh, boy factory waste? But but you could use that stream and use fly larva. You know, I'm doing yeah. fly larva on a small scale. The nice thing about the fly larva is they will eat anything. Yeah. Anything. It's a soldier fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is called? The shiny ones, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big, big bumpy yeah. And, um, and the nice thing about the nice thing about the fly larvae, the, 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 the uh, soldier fly larvae is they they excrete uh, uh, they have an excretion that gets rid of all the other flies, and 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 the smell is surprisingly it, it's, it's not any bad as any compost. Although I'm I'm getting more I, I have one that's by the house where I only put like kitchen waste in, but I have one that's out in the field, and I put everything that we didn't want to eat from a pig that I put into that bin, and it turned it into a fly larva. Everything like that. This, this kid, it, it took, well, no, it took a couple of weeks. Yeah, and and, and it helps when it heats up because then it, that speeds up the process, but I'm getting really good production. What are you doing with the fly larva then? I'm, I'm feeding them to ducks and to uh, tilapia, and it's like 30% protein, and, and and they're high fat too. So it's it's a high it's a high product from a from a from a waste stream. Yeah, yeah. It's basically free, and it's a place I can put stuff that, that I don't want to give to the worms, for example. So you can do meat and hair and all that stuff. I, I think they won't eat mammal bones, but I figure mm -hmm. after they get rid of them, I'll find the mammal bones and then I'll throw that in the mouth. Charlie C. Brown, six, wagon, seven, seven. You could also burn food waste, can't you? I mean, then that would be good for plants. Yes. Yeah. Jim, like uh, your comments about the scaling up or you know, spot on the platinum, you know, that's why, you know, like the county has 
the county's invested a whole lot of money in how we love Slaughterhouse. I don't know if you're aware of that. But the the uh, you know, that, that's that's a pretty substantial scale. I forget how many they kill there a day, but it's a lot. So the sheep sale, we're not going to do that. That, when you, where you're bringing them all together, or suicide, you know, where you're bringing all those fish mm -hmm. together, you know, it can seem like there's a way to, you know, because really you've got to stabilize it so you can move it around and be, right. not be unhealthy, it be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Eat it, in solid, do something to it. Okay. To me, that, that is something to really push for, because you have the volume. There are, there are two legal slaughterhouses, and a few more on the aisle, and one, at least one or more big fish processing places. I'm sure there's a good reason why they're not doing it now, but I haven't found out what it is. Mike, do you, are they, what are they doing with the rendering by products now? At the, are they burying it? or bury it. Because I know... Until the rendering plant gets up, they just go bury it. Did they have a rendering plant they're on the they, way? <laughs> you know just as much as me. They, 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 the county funded it, but I don't yeah. think it's up yet. Yeah. Doesn't Oahu have one, though? They burn some of the waste? Well, they... They take and the that blood meal and them. stuff yeah. out there. Yeah. The blood and bones, that's really good stuff in fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because normally they have to be processed, and that's why most of the time you have a, a commercial product would be the dried fish meal or the dried rendering that's right. meat that's and bone meal. Right. Dried so blood. What will happen blood. is yeah. that um, when she's well, we'll And then the regulation of what species we'll you can feed them back to. Uh -huh. and then it'll send yeah. and get the I'm going to tell a real quick story. You can feed it back to it. I worked in a greenhouse <coughs> for a guy. Okay. And what is a big glass greenhouse, and this can was in 1980. His father had built a greenhouse in the 30s. His father had previously produced and cured hams and sold them. In 1931, nobody had any money to buy ham. Mm -hmm. And he took those hams and he fed them back to pigs. <laughs> and the next day, <laughs> next year, he gave it, he traded the hams away for labor to build a greenhouse that I worked in almost 50 oh, wow. years later. Wow. <laughs> That's practical. <laughs> he survived. <laughs> so what do you think the real issue is? I think that's what the county, what this workshop is. You know, what, issue. what is the issue that uh, shall we say resources, effort, finances, or whatever it could be to, to be put to identifying... Um, um, Don't it be a sanitation issue? So if you have like, you know, raw things, you know, it could rot, and you know, there's just a lot of smell, flies, and um, people don't know where food's coming up because, you know, every time they put the lunch garbage in there, I'm thinking, what if there's like poison in there? You never know, right? It could kill all the pigs. They could get okay. some psycho, put in some, you know, cyanide or something into the garbage food from the hotels or whatever, and you okay. don't know until it's too late. So, you know, that, that's one big thing. You know, the okay, quality, the quality of the garbage food. That's why when you get to a commercial scale, if somebody is selling a product, they have mm -hmm. to market, they have to guarantee an analysis, and they have to guarantee mm -hmm. kind of the, the okay. safety of that, so of that food. So it's okay. different when you go large scale commercial versus right. small scale Thank uh, okay. backyard. Thank you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. and again, I, I might refer to something. It's the second time I've quoted Michael on this, I did to you a while ago, in terms of how they're handling it. And Michael said, look to Asia. I think that might be a, something mm -hmm. to do. I thought that, was, that may be the, the takeaway for the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, they're killing dogs in China. Dogs for a taste good. They were food. Yeah, they were actually yeah. protein for the Let's oh, yeah. oh. oh. find out whether, whether it's a problem or not. I only saw one cat in Vietnam and it was running real fast. Uh, 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 <laughs> I was just going to say, my year in Vietnam, you didn't see dogs around because that was a delicacy. We visited, uh, this is off top, we visited, no, not, we visited the uh, markets, we were in the Philippines, we in southern Philippines, okay, so we went up north and we were in the Philippines. Locos Norte, where 
Marco is from Toronto, actually. His wife came from Melbourne. And in the markets there, of course, you go in the market, you got produce, you got fish, and you got pigs, and they had an area back in their market where they had dogs. Okay. Mm, okay. Tin can muzzles, and those were the fattest oh, really? dogs I've ever oh. seen. So we need to get in touch with them. <laughs> those are probably rice dogs. They don't so usually eat no, no. meat tonight. No, no, they, they've been rice fed and garbage fed or something, but I didn't buy it. Well, actually, here in Hawaii, you know, the dredge, breadfruit is what they grew in Puna. And when they had lots of breadfruit, the Hawaiians gave the breadfruit to the pigs and the dogs. And when they didn't have breadfruit, they gave the dogs and the pigs. So it's, it's a way of doing shifting. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm thinking, you know, about that um, scentless piggery. So before you needed to locate the piggeries far away from, you know, central mm -hmm. areas, whatever, if you can get a scentless piggery and be pretty clean about it, you could have the piggery right near the restaurant. So when you have restaurant waste, it goes to the piggery. Oh, okay. And then you can also butcher the pig and, you know, and the so fellow Mike was talking about Hubble. I've been over to his, his, his little piggery there. And he is in a densely populated residential neighborhood. He's got some trees just right. And I could not believe it. Uh, I've been there too. Yeah, no smell. And no, the, he's got, what, 100 laying hens or something? Mm -hmm. 100 or 200. Four sows and the pigs from them. All those litter sizes kind of small. But, uh, but no smell. And you stand right over I've seen a million pigs in my life. I've never seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> if you want a soundproof, you can get a soundproof. You, you, see the, you see the reality. Go to Honolulu and talk to the piggeries and the animal production units and find out how many valleys and how many times they've moved during, during their careers. Oh, yeah. In fact, there was a school in Waianae, and they always complained about the smell from the piggery. And um, I went to Leeward. I, I used to teach there before. And on bad days, you could smell the smell from the chicken farm. And it was kind of unusual. I mean, I, I don't mind animals, though. But if you don't like animals, you probably wouldn't appreciate the smell. So. You know, you have issues. One of the things, on, if you look back at your first page, and even a bit on the soldier fly, well, that one garbage. Yeah. Uh, Soldier flies, garbage, waste, bakery waste, fish waste, food waste, blood meal, fish byproducts, mac nut meal, uh, even extra bananas. All of those are about waste, what we're calling waste. Right. Right? And they're all byproducts. That's exactly right. And to me, as far as the issue, there's a real focus there. And there's roughly, you know, there, there's food waste and processing waste, right? You've got your byproducts. Could you also have like invasive species as yeah, I think Jeff, like well, they the use the invasive ogle for farmers and things like that? Invasive. Invasive seaweed? Oh. Mm -hmm. They use it for farmers. Mm -hmm. That could also be invasive. With the junk trees up there, that's one they of the things they do. They invasive fish too. That's the way I look at it. As far as raising awareness, there's a big point there on this processing and restaurant waste. It's just a lot. Thank you. Thank you. You know, if you want to just go to energy, you can do that. Since we're not going to have the. But you also need to use renewable energy, you know, for those plants. And that would make more sense. It would be better to. I mean, I missed that one. What was that? We're using renewable, renewable energy, energy to, for the to creation. Plant. Really, the energy cost of processing it here. Yeah. So, like solar and wind. Because you don't want to waste your. <laughs> no, you don't want to burn up your electricity. Just for that. I think it was seven hundred and ninety-one. Um, so I'm going hard for me to hold on to that whole subject. I mean, I really enjoyed Bobby and talking about that facility. <coughs> Take that over. But I also have to deal with... Because you don't have you don't have pineapple over here, and there's very little pineapple in the state. But the pineapple brand used to be a good feat. Um, not going to have molasses very long. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that was good for palatability and good readily. 
energy source. I was just looking for, you know, um, what other, you know, in, in the Hilo area, of course, you've got the papaya waste. I, I'd have to ask Richard Ha how much bananas he throws out at his farm. He's probably the biggest banana producer. Yeah, yeah. On the stalks, yeah. yeah. And his waste fruit. I'm not even must have some call fruit or something. Yeah. That's for your waste system, right? Uh -huh. Stumps. Well, years. Oh, you're feeding them. They're making the sardines. That's how we used to make them with the pine trees. Yeah. We did the same thing. So we just. Duplicated what you've done, you just use the bananas. Mm -hmm. And then the plants. Mm -hmm. And instead, it's, you know, spend a great deal of money on a capital project. It all comes down to silage making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because most all of these byproducts are high moisture. Mm -hmm. the, the ideal thing would be if there was some other drier commodity that could be mixed with them to absorb that moisture to process. So the mill run would be good. Yeah, the mill run would. We, uh, when, when I go down to Dells and buy a salt block, where's that salt come from? Is it local? Mm -hmm. no. Salt. You know, you, you know farmers who use salt? <laughs> I don't know of any place here in Hawaii where that they do any harvesting of salt. Is there? I know go along the Bay Area. There's a lot in the Bay Area. Costly. Well, the whole theme running through all these issues, like it was who I'm visiting out there, is I've been in this business now for 40 years. You, you've got with so many new federal, state, county ordinances and laws, just to get a small subdivision here, or just to get a building up at today's prices, you're looking three to five years before you can even break ground, let alone and you have to prove to the county building and planning department where is it going to be, and then they have to go back to the state. See if those, we don't own our water. The water is owned by the state of Hawaii. It's only granted toward the counties to operate the, uh, the potable water system. The Big Island has the most expensive water in the whole state. Kauai is the cheapest. Maui and Oahu and Molokai are about, about the same price. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was looking into the uh, natural gas because a lot of my uh, fellow um, greenhouse growers on the mainland from Florida all the way into California and up into uh, Washington State, they don't know what propane is. We're bringing propane in, and unfortunately, propane is a PUC regulated commodity like gas and diesel and jet fuel, and that's run by the gas company which has the exclusive monopoly. And you know why that is an exclusive monopoly on propane? You want to know why you pay five, six dollars a gallon? Because of the military. They have to have that. We went through all this three years ago at, at Kaneohe and Marine. The general invited almost similar to what we're doing here. But it, it's so monopolized between Helco, which owns all the islands of the electrical, and Matson, which brings in all the stuff. And then you've got the gas company, because they have to have so much in reserve in case of a catastrophic problem that these, all these units are able to pipe in uh, propane. They will not allow natural gas to come to Hawaii. So the ga uh, gas grow, which is one of the biggest uh, EP, uh, uh, it's a big company, owns all the, the gas grow uh, companies. Uh, I talked to the, uh, one of the vice presidents that runs the contained fueling, which is acetylene, torching, all that kind of material. And he says we are prohibited by state law under the PUC to bring in natural gas because it's already, a, it's already locked in by propane for the state by the gas company. That's why they built two huge holding facilities just recently in Canada. So in order to get your energy costs down to build these things, then all the planning departments work off of those things. That's why the electric company only allows so much of solar and wind in a given area. They're already stopping certain people 
if, because by law, it's another PUC, they, they have to make money for their investors. So they have to only go, uh, allow, that's why you see so many of these windmills shut down mm -hmm. when they end cell phone. Yeah. They, they don't want to put any maintenance, so they, therefore, it's too much energy. So they can't hold it, mm -hmm. and it's a finite when the winds are good or the solar when you get the sun. Mm -hmm. So Helco is under mandatory, along with the gas company, that they have to supply so many uh, the, the megawatts at a constant because their equipment is only regulated for those that type of unit. Natural gas is not part of our formula in Hawaii. We're one of, only the, one of the very few states that entirely exist on propane. Natural gas on the mainland, you, you can get that piped in for literally half cents a gallon. I know, I know big nurseries in California and Florida and Midwest. Uh, <coughs> yeah. The energy costs are just in the pennies. You know, we're at 42 cents here on the big island. Uh, you want to keep focused that you know, if, if part of the problem is we're trying to produce more food here than the energy we use. Right. We just import need, energy to produce food. We haven't really. You need energy though to move your trucks, to take them to market, or whatever. Absolutely. Or pay your pay your bill, pay your light company. So you, you need something that's going to for every BTU you put in and you get out. That, there's the formula that you have to come up. Yeah. British, British yeah. thermal units. Paul, 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 are you on, you train, on no train. Train. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm a mile from the field thermal plant. It wakes me up at night. But they, they didn't run a they didn't run a line out of my property, so. which is good because I'm paying less than other rates. Yeah. So there are other ways to have it without without gas. That would bring the point. I, I'm just saying it's one, it's one element. You either got electricity or, or propane. Yeah. That, that's you know to operate big processing, you, you need you need motors, and that, those motors need. Some kind of a fuel. Yeah. We, we need to figure out how to, to, how to turn the mon monopoly to yeah. the feet. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys want to okay. do bananas. So, we're, we're saying we here inside the PUC. Yeah, it's the <laughs> 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 you have bananas. There's bread here. Don't you put that in there. Take that off. It's already done. I'm advocating a train. we got to get off the car. Because that'll train, save us train, so much energy. No, trains are no good. Really, we're, we're too small for a train. You and I'll talk about it sometime, okay? But cars are worse. Do I have to hook up all the, you know, naughty children to something, you know, a transformer that generates Google, electricity? two words. Guided bus way. Yeah, so some kind of mass transit, the, the, the car is just way too inefficient. All, all of these products that we're talking about here are high moisture. So you're transporting All a lot of water, water. Mm -hmm. and you're moving, so you know it's... What if you have solar de dehydrators around the planet? Solar dehydrators or something? So it would be a potential of solar dehydration. So you take it to a solar heater site and leave it there for X number of days and then you transport it to the Right? I mean, why do you solar energy? And you could even... We recycle whatever evaporation you get and So get in touch with look What other issues? In my years of groups together, if, if you really want this this Kind of organization, you have to be a bona fide state, complete state organization, association, as you well know, the nurserymen or the uh, cattlemen, in order for the politicians to look for votes your way. It, you have to be united in all the islands. You have to have your the umbrella organization, and then you have all your satellites for each island. Uh, the landscapers have it, the nursery has it, the turf grass has it, the cattle has it. Um, I think the chicken people have it to an extent. Um, papaya, something like that. Mm. Uh, some, of, some of the, oh, the papaya has, um, and that's a federal USD under the papaya. Uh, the uh, um, coffee has it. So if, if you can, I'll tell you, politicians 
really do listen when you're a united bona fide association that state you encompass everybody with satellite organizations on the state because then then the Department of Agriculture because this is more into their line Department of Agriculture as you well know jobs all their stuff over to Mano, CTAR, not, not the Hilo. Uh, so if you want any research done to make all these little projects beneficial or, or like you're saying it, it either works or doesn't work in order to get the funding you have to be some kind of a united organization, put everybody's inputs into that, and then sit down and, and register yourselves. And I guarantee you, it, they listen and they come. <laughs> from the governor on down, and from, from our congressional people. What is the purpose of all of this? Uh, to you know, generate income or feed people. I I think that the the key here, I think what they're looking for us today is to identify ways of addressing these issues. Now, ultimately, it would be yeah, feeding, but the issues feeding, are different if yeah. you're just feeding people. If yeah. you try to generate an income and a profit. You get regulated in all kinds of different ways, yeah. but if you're just feeding the people, all these regulations will just go away. You just feed it for yourself. You're talking about um, Any, anything, anything you want to raise. Okay. Grow. Okay. You're not going to get regulated because you're not selling it to anybody. If you if you grow that, who, how are you going to pay for your house and buy your shoes? If, I, if I'm growing food and feeding people, which I enjoy doing actually, and give more away than I should. But how will I how will I keep a roof over my head and shoes on my feet? How do you do it now? Sell it. Selling the food. Well, you still have a job, but then, you know we it, it doesn't necessarily have to be everybody should be doing it on their own. Yeah. yeah everybody should just have a background backyard garden, right? Well, no, it's community based. You know, uh, you know, I mean, they was doing this hundred years ago. This is not a new problem. Yeah. Well, they have community gardens. Oh, community, period, will solve the issue because if you, most of the people don't even know who their neighbors are. You know, so if you know all your neighbors, you know, I would just raise a couple of cows, the next meal, and they don't share it. It's about the community. So the definition of community is from that. Yeah, just, just, yeah that's, that's a good point. Like I'm saying, once you start stepping over the line to semi-commercial, even the swap meets in Honolulu, the big fines, except for the bread making people, they are not un, they are not regulated. So the Department of Health, anytime you sell produce, animal products, or plate lunches, even my soccer kids in Apuna, the <coughs> director out there. Shaved ice. We bought a shaved ice machine. The company company practically gave it to us. We said, oh, we're an ASO club. We got 300 kids in the Puna area. They sent it over here. The Department of Health came up. This is not certified ice. Your moms can't make this. You have to go down to Lee Ice House or the other one that was in town, pick it up, take it to the game, and then the Metal Gold supplied us the ice cream free ice because they're a big sponsor. We got regulated out, oh, you can't take ice cream and sell it to your kids. You have to give it to them, and we cannot bring out certified ice because we're not a certified ice house at Medical Dairy. So, once you're, like you're saying, once you step into the supplying the public insurance, when I deliver plants to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, right now in this state, any vendor, you need a $5 million coverage. Just step on the property, screwing your vehicle and your work. That's how regulated it is. And a walk was even more because their regulatory on everything else is more than bigger. You're, you're right. Yeah, well, the fine line is you're producing for yourselves, 
uh, produce so you can make some income to pay for your bills. But people say, what's going to happen when the containers quit coming? Community is what's going to happen because all the regulations are going to go away. We're going to be very busy. We're at the Yeah, I think Folks, any, so any last issues before we have to? We haven't heard anything from the city people yet. They've only had a breakout session. Margaret and I thought we would be listening to see our people first. So those are first order. So after they've been knocking that, we'll figure out. Yeah, the same thing. Thank you, brother. Yeah, really good. So they, their spokesperson was what, Ben Howe?